All right, I'm here with Bayside head football coach John White as Marlins get their 15th consecutive win in the series over First Colonial, a 39-0 shutout. Coach, um, and speaking with a couple of your players here, Leon Griffin III, Tejon Reese, they're kind of feeling as we won 39-0, we didn't play that well. How do you feel as a coach? Do you feel kind of a mixed bag? You know, we got the win, but there's still a lot to work on? Yeah, so it's one of those things where we'll probably watch the film and recognize that we have a whole lot of work on. Um, but that's a good thing to, so to say that we have a lot of new faces and our whole our entire defense from seven is gone from this past spring. Uh, we're replacing uh, four new linemen. Uh, we were putting in four new linemen and, and putting in a new quarterback. And we um, found a tailback. So, um, you know, and then some guys that are role players or backups and now starters or two-way players, and then, such as David Hudnett, we have a good game. I knocked the dude's helmet off earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. So to have all those variables and to still come out with, um, you know, only one turnover, which is a backwards pass. It wasn't like they took the ball away from us. We kind of gave one up. Mm -hmm. So to have one turnover, to not give up any points, and to put up 39 points. I mean, even the kickers, the Ben Bermudez is new. The, yeah. the, the, the holders are freshmen. You know, the, the snapper uh, was a role player last year. That was the kicker, uh, Patrick Collin, mm -hmm. you know, before. So a lot, with all those variables, I'll take it. You've been known for starting your defensive front guys, going back to when you had Trey Jones, a defensive player here in the beach, you know, the last couple years with Dalen Middleton throwing white. To have those new faces, I thought one of the encouraging things was after the punt return that Leon Griffin gave you that touchdown lead, they drive the length of the field, but in the red zone, you stop them. And Javante Martin in particular was one of the guys that stepped up time and time again in the first half. Yeah, Javante is uh, you know, he's a slim DN, uh, probably projects better as a linebacker in next level, but He's tough to block on the edge, uh, so he's actually very, very good at jacking up uh, tight ends and stuff and playing that C gap. So that's what we did because that's what they were hitting us. And, um, you know, and Kion Saunders did a good job. You know, this guy that didn't play in the spring because of COVID, you know, I think um, we had a family member, so that kind of made everybody apprehensive. So to get him back, you know, another big body at 6'2", 6'1", 230, you know, Kion Jr. And of course, Monte, you know, can step up and make some big things along with uh, Jeremy Klingon on the inside. You mentioned uh, the spring season and the COVID. You guys were close to making the playoffs last that Harper at all. Would you graduate a ton of guys, a lot of new faces? In fact, tonight you're missing 13 guys. Yeah. How do you, I mean, what's kind of your message with this group, knowing that the expectations aren't there for a lot of people, but I know you as a program, you guys expect to be in that mix every year, regardless of the names and the faces and your senior or junior or sophomore? Yeah, well, the expectations from the outside is it's pretty simple. That, that'll be extrinsic motivation. Our guys been busting their tail all two a days and everything like that. We've been going from 8 a.m. to 1, 1 p.m. So that's enough stuff, you know, for us to say, okay, well, we worked this hard, so why come out here and play this way? We worked this hard, so why come out here and make this mistake? So we just will take it. It's going to sound corny, cliche, but you take it every day, not necessarily one game at a time, but every day, and we go from there. You know, I'm, uh, I know that Cox just lost, but that doesn't mean anything to us because Cox will play us differently. You know, FC. Might not have looked that great against uh, Kellum, but they played us different. That was the most impressive drive I seen them have against us, and we shut them out. They didn't have a drive like that against Kellum, but they had a drive like that against us. So we know that everybody's going to play us different, mm -hmm. you know. So we, we take it. To have a guy that gets 100 yards on the ground, Tejon Reese, we got it, almost got one in Jalen Miller, and he also got some receivers: Leon Griffin, Aaron Evans, Reese was a receiver, and you got a new quarterback starting here in Mike mm -hmm. Myers, six foot four junior, live arm. Um, take me through kind of his uh, development for you guys. First half wasn't that great, but it looked a lot better in the second half tonight. Um, once again, intrinsic motivation. You know, Mike just needs to say to himself, I'm Mike Myers. He doesn't have to say, I'm the quarterback at Bayside. Just be Mike Myers first. You don't have to sit out here and impress anybody or worry about pleasing me. You know, he is a yes sir, no sir type of guy, high GPA guy. And of course, that height helps all of his throws. Once he got settled, he can make every day he won't throw. You know, the whole line did a good job protecting them, and that was one area, you know, one area that we were concerned about in the scrimmage because Malcolm brings it every year, and they got back there to us, but he wasn't in there. You know, Tejan was in that quarterback for the uh, for Malcolm scrimmage, so this was Mike's first live fire situation. So, you know, for him to start out that way, you know, the back was passing the screen and everything like that. Uh, you know, it's it, that, that's okay. We'll, we'll fix it. Final one, for your time. I mean, where do you kind of fit in this beach and how do you look at it? I mean, everybody's kind of circled the green run as the team. You've got a Cox team that's been a thorn in your side coming mm -hmm. up and they're 0-2, so they want to avoid 0-3. It feels like even tonight, Ocean Lake's kill them a two-point game. Anybody can kind of be anybody on any given night. Um, that's, um, sorry. That's uh, something, we'll just wait till the dust settles. Cause yeah. you know, once you get to about game six, game seven, you see what playoffs are looking like. And then you can kind of go back in retrospect and say, okay, I can see that this team was a, Playoff team, I can say that this team was going here. This team, this team might be winless or whatever the case may be. So right now, we're gonna get together tomorrow and see what we're looking like in comparison to the Cox film. 
we can say down the line, we see Kingsville, we see what they're looking like. Say down the line versus Ocean Lake, see what they're looking like. Ocean, you know, Cox play Ocean Lake, Kingsville. We'll go from there. But right now, we got Cox, and we'll enjoy this and, you know, take care of our family, lift our weights, and move forward. We'll and take it. Thanks so much. Congrats, Lloyd. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.